Bull Black's kingdom can be disastrous if you don't have a solid strategy. Even if you do, there are some tricky parts to this cave that can prove dangerous. As the name implies, this place is crawling with bulborbs, so you'll want to have a steady supply of red and purples with you. Bulblack's Kingdom gets a 3 out of 5 difficulty ranking because it's the first cave with enemies that pose a serious threat to your squadron. Prima Guides recommends coming in with the maximum amount of 100 Pikmin, but I recommend you take fewer for the sake of enemies and hazards. Contrary to what Prima Guides recommends, you will need some white Pikmin to unearth a treasure. One final note, Bulblack's Kingdom is one of the best caves to produce purple Pikmin. With three violet candy pop buds, you can produce 15 purple Pikmin every time you enter the cave. Viva la revolucion! It's time to conquer the Bulblack's Kingdom, starting with sub-level 1. A fair warning! This cave is a step up in terms of difficulty, because there are some nasty enemies to be encountered here. Uh, to start things off, we have some dwarf orange bulborbs. They are just as easily swarmed as other dwarf bulborb species, so they're pretty small time. I want to take a moment to listen to the music, because it's pretty amazing. It really does sound like you're about to conquer a kingdom and overthrow its ruler. But that's not going to happen until the last sublevel. For now, we have a new candy pop bud, a crimson candy pop bud. As the color of its petals imply, you can make red Pikmin with this. But I would not recommend doing so. The only reason why I threw one of my Pikmin in there was so it would be registered in the Piklopedia. We're going to need our yellows for a future sublevel, and the purples and whites are too valuable to convert in the first place. Okay, the dwarves may have been easy, but the same cannot be said for this enemy right here. This is an orange bulborb. Before I take it down, I should warn you that it is not a mere palette swap of a red bulborb. Far from it, in fact. This guy is actually quite dangerous because it can notice you at a greater distance than other bulborb species. They are best approached from behind, but alas, we will not get that opportunity. You'll want to have your purple Pikmin at the ready because when you get close, they will wake up. Come on, go down, down, hey, yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, that was pretty easy, and I believe this is the only treasure to be found on the first sublevel. Make no mistake, orange bulborbs are nasty with a capital N. Do not underestimate them. For our first treasure that we have ransacked and stolen from the kingdom, the Crystal Clover. And isn't it shiny and green? All right. That is it. Pretty short sublevel, I have to say. But perhaps I have said too much. It's time for us to move onwards and downwards. Let's wait until our game saves. And now we shall move on to Bulblack's Kingdom, sublevel 2. Believe it or not, this sublevel is even easier than the first one was. It's the red's turn to shine because there are quite a few fire hazards. Although the actual sublevel itself is very short. Now, while I'm gathering up the reds, I should mention something. There are a grand total of seven sublevels in the cave. It's much too long for me to uh, record all at once. So as such, I'm going to be splitting the cave into two different videos. I think I'm going to tackle the first four sublevels in the first half and the remainder of the cave in the second. Uh, there are some fiery dweevils here. Might as well go ahead and take this guy out since I don't want him carrying the treasure. 
With that done, we need to throw everybody on the ledge because that is where the treasure is. Okay, fellas. Mosey on over and grab the gem. And I think this treasure has a pretty funny name, if my memory is correct. We'll also want to take you out because we don't want you carrying off the treasure. Very good. And that's pretty much it. What do we have here? 150 Pocos? This is the Tear Stone. And the reason why this treasure name is so funny is because of Olimar's journal entry. And we're going to whistle you guys over. So you won't carry off any unnecessary baggage. We're moving right along so far. Uh, the first couple of sub-levels of the Bulblax Kingdom are pretty simple. But the later stages can be a little touch and go. So I'm going to try my best. Sub level 3 of the Bulblax Kingdom. Uh, this one is also fairly simple, but it can be a little irritating because we're going to be dealing with some new enemies here. Joy. Not really. Because these guys are irritating. And let's go ahead and get rid of you now before you cause us any more trouble. Ah, very nice. There are some female sheer grubs here as well, but we don't need to bother with them. What we do need to talk about are the new enemies, and let's see if we can lure him away from his buddy. This is a Withering Blowhog. Withering Blowhogs cannot kill your Pikmin. They will try and blast you with gusts of air, and although it can't kill your Pikmin, it will cause them to get deflowered, because something in their breath causes flowers to lose their petals. And that can be really irritating, to say the very least. There's also an ivory candy pop bud if you need it. I'm not sure if I do, to be totally honest. But there's also an egg, and hopefully it'll contain nectar. Okay, let's bring you down. And, uh-oh, yeah, get out of the way. Somehow I managed to dodge that, but, uh, you know, we're gonna get rid of you. Oh, those whites got hit. But that's it for the uh, withering blowhogs. They're, they're irritating. And the worst part is, we haven't seen the last of them. They'll be back in later caves. But with the main threat eliminated, let's see if there's any nectar waiting for us. Yes, there is. We probably won't get everyone flowered up, but we got a good number. So that's all well and good. Now for the treasure. I believe it is buried underground, hence the reason why an ivory candy pop bud can be found here. So we can have the whites go to work on that uh on that treasure and in the meantime i think we're going to go ahead and convert some reds now i only have 20 with me and i want to save at least 10 because we'll need the reds to carry one of the treasures in the last sub level but again that can wait in retrospect, I probably should have brought more Pikmin with me into the cave. But I'm confident my decision was the right one in terms of Pikmin roster. Anywho, another treasure. Or rather, the only treasure to be found in sub-level 3. And this one has a rather interesting name as well. It is clearly a snail shell, but that's not what the ship calls it. Only 40 Pokos? Wow! That's cheap. The Olimarnite Shell. I don't know if this is supposed to resemble Olimar in some way. I mean, clearly he doesn't have a snail shell on his head. And it's not like his head is shaped like a snail shell or anything. I don't know. I really don't know. But one thing I do know is that we're going to move on. 
One thing I forgot to mention is that this is in fact a second take of a video I recorded previously. The reason why I didn't use the first video was because, well, the audio was glitched and I sounded like a robot. Yay. Bullblax Kingdom, sub-level 4. Okay, this sub-level is quite tricky. And it might take me a bit longer than the previous sub-levels. But that is because there is a rather nasty surprise waiting for us somewhere. We'll have to pay close attention to our treasure gauge. But first things first, we need to get rid of these electrical wires. Because this is the sub-level where we need a lot of yellow Pikmin. So we're going to take the yellows with us. And we are going to tread cautiously. Like I said, we want to pay close attention to where our treasure gauge is. Oh, a honey wisp. Excellent. Not excellent. Midites. Stupid Midites. Why did I not bring the purples with me? You know, being cautious is a good thing in this game, but it can sometimes backfire on you. That was one of those times. I could have used the extra nectar. Oh well, no one died, so that's good. I just want to check my uh, map to see where everything is. Okay. So, my treasure gauge indicates that the danger is nearby. It is somewhere in that area, and I'm going to have to tread it very cautiously. Hmm. Those Anno Beetles are going to be a nuisance. Really? Nevertheless, I think I still want to bring my purples just in case the surprise shows up. Really? Okay, so if we move carefully, we can see nothing? Okay, maybe I didn't, uh, maybe I wasn't close enough. Let's go ahead and take you out, because you're going to be an issue. I'll just need to wait until these guys stop, well, transmitting electricity. Oh, wow! Okay! Did you see that? The anode beetle inverted, and I managed to take down an iridescent glint beetle which contained a treasure. Now that glint beetle is rather interesting because if it does manage to escape, it won't reappear. So you'll have to reset and come back. But that's not the main issue of this sub-level. The main issue is right over here? Where is it? Okay. Oh, there you are! Okay! I was wondering when you would show up. Say hello to the Wally Wog. The Wally Wog is similar to the yellow Wally Wog in that it can only be found in cavernous areas. Well, actually, the yellow Wally Wog isn't found in caves. What am I talking about? Anyway, not important. What really makes the Wally Wog dangerous is the fact that it can sense you from pretty much anywhere, so its range is much greater than that of the yellow Wally Wog. All of which is ironic because in the first Pikmin game, I thought yellow Wally Wogs were more dangerous. But let's not kid ourselves because all Wally Wogs are dangerous and annoying and unfriendly. Oh, if only we had Rock Pikmin right about now. But that's not until the third game. All right, let's pay attention to the present. We've got two treasures to loot. And we had just enough Pikmin to bring them both back. How wonderful. All right, for treasure number one, let's see what we've got. It's a giant quartz crystal. And it is simply known as the Crystal King, which may or may not take inspiration from a certain Paper Mario boss. Now let's see what's behind treasure number two. So we've got a Japanese yen here, at least I think that's what it is. This is the Unknown Merit. And that is it. For this sub-level, but we're not quite done here. Oh no. 
we need to convert some Pikmin. We're going to need a bunch of purple Pikmin by the end of the cave. In fact, we're going to need a bunch of purple Pikmin towards the end of the game, period. Because there is a certain treasure that we'll be encountering much later, which has quite a bit of bulk. And we're going to need all of the purple Pikmin we can get. Okay. So, right now we have exactly 10 red Pikmin. So I think we've converted as many red Pikmin as we need to. But this is all well and good. I'm not concerned because we've got a bunch of purples in our roster. What I am concerned about is the fact that they haven't been flowered. I was counting on that one honey wisp to uh, flower our Pikmin. Now, I know there's a second one around here somewhere. I just have to find it. Obviously, the more flowers we have in our squadron, the better. Maybe it's at that glow cap where the yellow Wallywog was. But before I do anything, I'm going to throw one yellow on here. Scratch that, I'm gonna use a purple. There we go. Let's get rid of you, because one Anode Beetle is no threat. Ah, there you are! Very nice. Alright, we got a fair few amount of flowers there. Only about three or four leaves left in our squadron. So I think we're going to stop the video right here and now. Next time on Let's Play Pikmin 2, we are going to explore the rest of the Bulblax Kingdom. See you guys next time.